Welcome to Word Connect with Pastor Maxwell Ogaga, a teaching ministry where believers are trained to be established in the truth of God's Word. For more information and free downloads, please visit www.thepastormax.ng. I remember one time I went for a meeting, and uh, oh my God, Pastor Pastor Afolabi, uh, he came from Uniben, he preached. I cannot forget that meeting. I had this uh, native, one native my, my mother gave to me. You know, you know, somehow I in life, you just have one native. That native, you don't need to wash it because it does not go out all the time. Hmm? It goes out just once and comes back. And I dressed for that meeting. I had shoes. And I went for that meeting. The guy taught. He taught. I didn't have an offering. I was in, in school then. I trekked for that, to that meeting. Everybody was giving. I, I'm like, God, what can I give? I, I kept feeling, give your shoes, give your shoes. I'm like, God, how can I go home? I, I felt that so strongly. I took my shoes, went forward, and gave it. I mean, <laughs> when I was going home that day after the meeting, I'll be walking this way. People will see me and cross to the other side because here was, here was a fully dressed man with Bible, fully dressed with native, no shoes. And you know, there's a way you will dress and if you don't, you, you are walking and then you are now walking with confidence as if you have shoes. You know, you know how you are bouncing like their shoes. And then somebody's wondering like, ah, say, hey, hey, who has done this one? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and God forgive you if you are not speaking in tongues. He said, hey, when they say don't read Bible, they will not hear. Don't read, don't read. This book will kill you. You know, but, but what am I saying? Why am I saying that example? Never let anyone, never let shame of what you have. Ne you see, oh, when it's time to give, plug in. Get in your seat. And the reason... We, we, we find it okay to give change every time in church because that's how we grew up. Every time they gave you money for offerings, they, they, you went to look for change immediately. Even if you, you, some of you are laughing, you will climb the bag, say, stop, 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 stop. Wait for <laughs> the man who is selling this. I say, do you have change? You're always thinking. You're always thinking. So every time they mention offering time, your brain just say change time, change time, change time. And then you've done that over 15 years. <laughs> and that's why you see when some people want to pay their tithes. It's 11,999 naira, 50 kobo. Say, least 50 kobo. This, if, uh, it, by the time the bank charges, if I transfer, bank will deduct 25 naira. So what I will do, I will remove 25 naira so that when the bank, it will not balance the tithe. You know, you see people who gave God tithe and they said they are owing God. Say, tithe is 10,000. Say, God, this month, you know the way things are. <laughs> Gary has gone up. I will pay five, balance five. Next month. <laughs> Okay, a poor widow came and put in her two copper coins. Next verse. Next verse. Calling his disciples, he said to them, truly. When he uses the word truly, it's like saying, verily, verily, I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all the contributors to the treasury. How can you say that, Jesus? How can you say that? Jesus called his disciples and said, this poor widow put in more, more, more than all the contributors. Verse 44. Look at why Jesus said that. He says, for they all put in out of their surplus. But she, out of her poverty, eh, some people are giving out of surplus. Some others are giving out of poverty. So it wasn't just the Macedonian Christians who had done that. Someone, some poor old widow in the days of Jesus had exemplified this. Why? Because when you truly hear the gospel, when you truly value the gospel, giving will be a tin of joy. Glory to God. Giving will be a tin of joy. You don't need to promise heaven and earth. You don't need to promise. No, no, we're talking about the motive for giving. 
You don't just need to give because God is going to give you a hundredfold return back. No, there is, there is a motivation. Oh God, let this truth go forth. When you give to the ministers of the gospel and you give to apostolic ministry, you're saying, oh God, dear God, let me be able to get this message out. Let more people hear this. This is the truth that needs to liberate the world. I, I want more people to get the materials. I want more people. I want us to get on air. I want this. I want people to get this word. And if you're giving to the poor, uh, as they were contributing to the saints in Jerusalem, we'll talk about that. You say, oh dear God, this is my brother. I want to help my brother to find his feet. I want to help my brother to have some clothes and some food. Your primary motivation for giving in the New Testament has to be love. The love of the gospel and the love of the saints. Hallelujah. Come on, I said hallelujah. So he said, for they all put in out of their surplus. But she, out of her poverty, look at this, put in all she owned and all she had to live on. What faith? What faith? She didn't just put in all she owned. She put in all she had to live on. That is widow's might. You realize what you have been given has not been widow's might, right? Is it clear? What's widow's might? Come on, define widow's might from Mark chapter 12, verse 44. What is widow's might? No, not all she has. We're not talking about the widow. We're talking about your own widow's might. Now, what would be your own widow's might? All you have and all you need to live on. Have you ever given that? You see, that's how sometimes we throw words around, scriptural words around, without proper understanding. This woman exemplified the same grace at work in the Macedonian Christians. Out of her poverty, she gave. She gave. And you you must realize something. This woman did not give because something was promised to her. Nobody said, if you give your widow's might in 24 hours, God is going to turn your life around. They didn't give them that promise. Do you realize that uh, it is only sometimes in our days today we give all kinds of promises to people when they want to give? And the, the apostles never did that. Jesus never did that. And people gave. Oh, man, people gave to the ministry of Jesus. We'll talk about that this month. People gave to the ministry of Jesus. Substance. They didn't even just give. You realize that the only officer that Jesus had in his ministry was an accountant? You realize that? Oh, what do you think Judas was doing? You know, most of you just remember Judas for selling Jesus. But you know, he actually had the money bag. Judas was the accountant of the team. There was no secretary, there was no PRO, but Jesus had an accountant. What was he accounting for? The money people were giving him and blessing him with. You know, if I have time this morning, I'm going to deal with that. You know, people say Jesus was poor on the earth. Was Jesus really poor? If you examine scripture, was he really poor? But at the same time, Jesus was not going about everywhere talking about money or what he had or boasting about what he had. You know, someone said the other day, well, if Jesus was in this place, he would not use this. You know, Jesus was walking and he was using and he didn't even own anything. You know, people sometimes just, they are very funny. You know, a, a preacher was saying that, and he was trying to castigate prosperity. There are extremes to that, but he was trying to castigate prosperity. So he was saying that. And uh, I, I, I was in that meeting. So when I left, I told my friend, I said, some things are not logical. Was Jesus using a microphone? He said, no. So why is he using a microphone? Since you want us to go back to the way Jesus... Go by the seashore and shout. Blessed are the peacemakers, for yours is the kingdom of heaven. So you can be like Jesus 100%. These things, listen carefully to this, are tools to help the work. Are you hearing what I'm saying? They, see, don't see kingdom things as, oh, this is expensive. Oh, this is. No, they are just tools to get the message out. See it that way. See it that way. Even in your own life. 
For instance, if, if, if you're blessed with a car, don't just say, hey, as a kingdom citizen, don't just say, like, nah, I have a good car to show up. No, say that, yeah, I have a good car, I can get to church on time, I can get people in church. You know, see everything you have in this world as what? As a tool for advancing the kingdom of God. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's pray. We'll continue from here next to Wednesday. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you. Oh, we thank you, Father. We, we thank you for the examples. Oh, Jesus, we thank you. Oh, thank you, Father. We thank you for the examples that you have shown us from the scriptures. Oh, Jesus, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Oh, we praise your name for the, the churches in Macedonia, the widow that, that exemplifies for us something strong and powerful and potent. We ask, oh God, that you would that same grace will be at work in us. And I pray for everyone today that the hand of the Lord will be upon you to bless and to increase you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. We know you've been blessed by this telecast. To become a partner, please call plus 234-805-888-7575. Pastor Maxwell's messages are available in over a dozen books and a thousand audio and video format. To purchase this title and other titles by Pastor Maxwell Ogaga, please call plus 234-805-888-7575. Or send us an email, office at Pastor Max at NG. Also available are free downloads from www.thepastormax.ng. God bless you.